there's always something that needs a little fixing on Bar Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Restorations and Repairs here in the mountains of North Carolina. And tonight, it is cold. Whew, it is cold. But we're doing some work on the Beetle. In fact, this is the last work I'll be doing on the Beetle before switching it out for the bus project, at least temporarily anyway. And the project we're going to get into tonight is this. Super Beetles here in the United States came with uh, brakes, drum brakes, all the way around. Most other markets, I think it was 71 or 72, they got disc brakes. It's an easy upgrade and it really makes a big difference. These are not power brakes and having four drum brakes here in the mountains can make for some pretty hairy stopping. So I went ahead and bought the MP kit. It came with new uh, calipers, new disc rotors, brackets to convert this over, and I bought a wheel bearing set as well. So I'll show you how to repack wheel bearings as a separate video, but we'll be installing new wheel bearings with this as well. So let's go ahead. First thing we're gonna have to do here is pop off these caps. The other side has a little clip that holds in the cable for the speedometer. So it goes right through there. So we're gonna get rid of both these caps. We'll undo the axle nuts that are behind them and we can pull these off. This job, not that tough. So I hope you'll stick around and watch. All right, it's really just a matter. Sometimes you need to give them a little love tap. Most of the time they just kind of pop out of here. These were, uh, these are properly lubricated. They've been, this car was taken care of by its previous owner. It sat for a long time before I got it, but whoever had it before, they took care of it. Okay, what you can see here is some real nasty grease. So I'm gonna take that stuff over to the parts washer and clean up what I don't uh, reuse, or what I am reusing. The rest of it we'll just put in the trash. But we're gonna go ahead, clean this off with a rag, and we'll get this axle nut off. All right, so once we've got this all cleaned up, we've got a six millimeter Allen head that we need to take off, and that's gonna allow us to get this loose. Let's go ahead and loosen that up. And this is kind of holding everything in place. It's an interesting design. Can't recall seeing this on another model of car, but it certainly has worked well for the Beetle for all these years. And we'll just set aside that because we are going to reuse that. So, little Allen head there. And then should be able to undo this. And so instead of using a cotter pin like a traditional, it's just screwed on to spec and then tighten down and held in place. So. There we go. Again, I'll clean all this up in the parts washer here. And then we are ready. The inner or outer wheel bearing is right here. We're just gonna pull the whole thing off. Oh yeah, and there we go. And look at that, we have brand new brakes on this thing. New wheel cylinders, new brake pads. I mean, they are almost brand new. It's a shame, but it's gonna to go to good use. I'm donating it to a local school to practice drum brake repairs. Again, we'll clean off some of the, the grease. Go ahead and get our inner race out of there. There's our inner bearing. Set that aside as well. got our seal here which, and it's trying to hang on there I'll pull, pull that out with there we go so there oh, well just dropped on the ground but we got our inner seal out now you don't have to take any of this apart in fact all I'm going to do is unscrew the brake line back here and I can take these four bolts out this whole assembly in one piece is going to come out and that's really cool how easy this job can be because you get to save the assembly. If you ever want to go back, you don't have to figure out like, oh wait, how did I have all this set up? It just, just comes out. So I will move the camera to the back here and I'll show you how with a line wrench, we go ahead and take that brake line out. Now you are gonna lose some brake fluid, so I'm gonna put a bucket down underneath here. Just be prepared for that. All right, there's our brake line right there. We've got a brake hose. This looks like it had some damage here, but the hose has been replaced. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it off right here. And that's an 11. And looks like I'm gonna have to get, because it's rolling in here, I'll have to get a larger, I think it's a 17. There we go. Once we've got it started, that should come out of there pretty quickly. 
Now this kit doesn't come with new flex lines, just the hard line. So be advised, you will still need to have your flex lines replaced if they haven't been done relatively recently, I would recommend doing that. And in the case of this car, these have been replaced pretty recently, so. Okay, that's it, that's free. Pull that back and we're ready to move back to the front to get our four bolts to hold the backing plate in. Throughout this video, you may see me using an impact gun uh, and obviously I'm using a lift. You don't need either of those tools in order to do this job. You just need the size of the sockets that I'm talking about, a wrench. You do need a set of line wrenches um, in order to get this apart properly, but the stuff that I'm doing, I'm making it easier on myself because I have the equipment. If you don't have this equipment, you can still do this job just as well. So we'll go ahead and remove that. And uh, you'd be amazed just how quickly all this came apart. I was almost amazed at how quickly all this fell apart. Cool, and what we're left with is this is just sitting on a spindle. And that's it. Is that easy enough for you? So I can take this thing with the drum. You could resell that on eBay if someone wanted to go with stock. I mean, clearly these are brand new brakes. Um, in my case, like I said, I'm going to be making a donation to a local school's automotive program, but we're left with our spindle. And then of course I'm going to clean up the face and everything here, but we're, we're already to the point where we're getting ready to go back onto the car. That's how quick this job is. So here is the kit for one side and we're working on the passenger side here. So once you've removed everything, it's really straightforward. You're going to go ahead and install this. You've got two different sizes. I'll lay those flat so you can see the difference. But the taller ones, the longer ones, they're going to be for the caliper. And the caliper does come preloaded, so that's really nice. And it's also, it's kind of a rarity, but it's, it's universal. It can go left or right, so it has bleeders on the top and the bottom. So a lot of times that is not the case. But the two longer ones, they're going to be for attaching the caliper. The four shorter ones, we're going to put some lock washers on there, and they're going to be going in there. So let's go ahead. I've got them loaded up, and we'll be installing that onto our spindle hub and we've got these two small and two larger washers so on some models for reasons that are mysterious to me at this point you will have to add shims on the other side so not on this side but in between that's to push the caliper bracket or the caliper itself farther out so it's centered on the rotor so it does come with two different sizes it just says if you're going to use it on the top you got to use it on the bottom that makes sense you wouldn't want your caliper to be canted or you'll wear your brakes unevenly so the last piece it comes with is this, and that is a new brake line. It is uh, comes straight, so we'll have to bend that. I do have a tool to bend that with, although I'll show you a trick. You can use a socket, but what you don't want to try to do is do this because you'll just kink it, and so that's a problem. I've got the rotor over on the table. Let's go ahead and pound in our new races, and I'll show you how to repack the wheel bearings in a separate video, but we'll take our packed bearings, stuff them in there, and we're ready to take this thing back together. All right, we've got a new rotor here. I've rinsed that off, gotten any uh, casting stuff off of it. I'm going to lay that in there. We're going to use the old U.S. General race and seal bearing installer. And, like, this thing is old as dirt, but it works beautifully. she is all right looking good so once we put our repacked wheel bearings in there it'll fit right in that hole like so okay do the other side as well and we're ready to go back together and the other side as well we got the smaller you know, the gold one we're ready to install that Let's do it. All right, here we are on this thing. And like I said, we're gonna... Here we're back with our spindle. And we're going to lay our new piece right over it like that. Now you wanna make sure the surface behind it is clean. Obviously it is. If there was trash or debris caught in there, you could bend this plate or even break it because it is cast. 
we'll go ahead and start those by hand and I'll hit them with the impact gun. If you're not going to do that, I think the uh, tight torque spec was 35 maybe. Double check that on your kit. It's 17 millimeter bolts. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten them. Great. Let's go ahead and get our rotor with our newly packed wheel bearings and slide those onto it. All right, once we've got our wheel bearings repacked, we are ready to slide it onto the stub. There we go. And I'm going to add a little more grease here, but first I'm going to put my lock washer back in here. And it's time to screw this on. While I'm not showing you me doing both these, it is worth noting that the driver's side is a reverse thread. So if you are struggling to get it off, it's because you're turning it the wrong way. So I'll go ahead and put this back on. And when you're doing wheel bearings for the first time like this, um, I usually bring them down and seat them. So in case they're sticking on there, I'll go ahead and tighten these up. Tiller snug, right? So she doesn't want to move now. And then I'll just loosen it up a little bit and put our six millimeter Allen head bolt back in, tighten that up. Beautiful. We're ready to put our caliper back on. So on mine, I've got to use the fatter shim on there. And so what I'm going to do here first is just go ahead and lay this. I've taken the center piece out that was holding these two pads apart and I've taken my little clip there that was holding that. I'm just going to get this one started and that'll hold this in place while I fish the shim into it. All right, so that one started. Now I'm going to start this one, but like I said, I'm going to kind of sneak that shim down in there. And it's a Oops, it's a little bit of a trick, but it's not the worst. There we go. Once I've got that one started, do the same thing underneath with the other one. Go ahead and tighten these two down. And hopefully you can see the gap between the two pads is equal. So that's what those spacers are for. All right, last step is installing the brake line. And here's our brake line. I'm gonna go ahead and install it on the rubber hose side first. Now, as far as bending this goes, you got to just be careful not to kink anything, but it's not that hard to do it. I want to kind of give it, man, it's cold out here today. Fingers don't want to work properly. <laughs> All right, I got that started. We'll go ahead and tighten it down. And we can make final adjustments if it's touching anything that we don't want it to. After it's been tightened down here, I can make some more adjustments. I have a tool, but this is aluminum. I don't think these are steel lines because they bent real easy. But you can with copper, especially, they tend to kink. All right, so let's see if it's gonna rub on anything. Oh, that's actually beautiful. So that, <laughs> that should be it. I'm going to get my helper. I'm going to bleed the brakes and we're done. Um, let me go ahead and move the camera. And we'll just wrap this thing up. So there we go. There is our drum brake to disc brake conversion kit. This is going to work on Super Beetle 71 to 79. 
and I think it would work on regular Beetles as well for those years. Um, not positive because most of the cars I've owned have been Supers and it's been a while since I did a conversion on a regular one. But what I can tell you is this is not a tough job by any means. I got to get a helper out here to pump the brakes for me to get the air out of it. But I mean, with filming, this was like an hour and a half on the ground by myself, probably an hour and a half. So not a tough job. It required a 13 millimeter uh, taking everything off and a 15, I think was the other size and putting it back on 17s all the way. An 11 and a 17 wrench to uh, get the brake lines off. And you saw, I didn't even use any special tools. You, if you're going to do your bearings, you can pack them by hand or you can buy something like the packer that I showed you in the other video, but again, not a difficult task. I would recommend doing this if you're going to try to drive your vintage Volkswagen up on highway speeds. Yes, it changes the car, makes it non-stock, but this is not the kind of modification that people are going to look down upon. This is the kind of modification people are going to be like, oh, thank God it's got a disc brake conversion kit. <laughs> I guess that'll do it for today. I'm freezing, man. My hands, I've had a hard time filming this. It's like 15 degrees. I'm running low on kerosene, so I've just been trying to run off the wood burning stove in here, and it can't be more than about 30 in here right now. And that makes for an interesting day in the shop. Anyway, my friends, I'll see you next time. Take care.